Millions of people have been sheltering from gunfire, explosions and airstrikes in Sudan's capital Khartoum for days. The city is at the heart of the battle for control between the Sudanese army and paramilitary rapid support forces. With the U.S. brokered ceasefire barely holding, many are using the lull to make the painful decision to leave. Rowan Awalid was expecting to fly to a wedding in Cairo. Instead, she found herself on a terrifying 72-hour journey to Giza. One of the rockets hit our home and destroyed the bathroom. They were really scared. Children were gripped with fear. Her ordeal isn't over. She left her brother behind and waits for any news of him. He had to stay back home in Sudan due to a visa issue. My brother is at home alone. His internet is down. We know nothing about him. This is so sad because we cannot communicate with him. Thousands are leaving the capital by bus, some traveling north to the Egyptian border, northeast to Port Sudan, Chad and South Sudan. But with high demand for transport and food, comes high prices. We are really suffering. Fuel has run out. Bakeries are closed and we can't find a loaf of bread. The same goes for meat. Prices have soared. The bus to Egypt was $60, with an extra cost of the taxi on the border crossing. Now it's more than $342. The regional director of the International Committee of the Red Cross says Khartoum is densely populated. When explosive weapons are used, streets become battlefields and civilians pay the price. Countries across the world are also taking advantage of a quieter weekend and have scrambled to evacuate their nationals. Military aircraft have landed in nearby Djibouti to airlift people. Others land in Khartoum with convoys to pull out their nationals or ships in Port Sudan. The international community missed a golden chance when they evacuated the foreign nationals that they could have gotten in some supplies, anything to tide things over. They didn't. As the humanitarian situation deteriorates, the United Nations says it won't leave. But many Sudanese say they've been left to fend for themselves. Laura Khan, Al Jazeera.